I'm Sam Philpott, and I'm talking to Paul Heritage, Professor of Drama and Performance at Queen Mary University of London, about his role as Director of the People's Palace Projects, which is an arts-based community organisation based at the university, with close links to Brazil, and was most recently involved in the London 2012 Festival. Professor Heritage, can you tell me more about the People's Palace Projects? We decided that it would be really good to have a a research centre that's about arts in applied social settings, because that's where a lot of my own research had been. But I was interested in what it would be to create an arts organisation that's also a research organisation, specifically to look at the area of how the arts makes a difference in relation to social justice, human rights, those sorts of areas. Throughout the whole time that we've been working, it's always been local, it's always been international. And for about 20 years, my own work has been based in Brazil. So the People's Palace Projects has taken on this characteristic of building very strong cultural links between the UK and Brazil during the first 15 years that were very much related to criminal justice system, to public security. So we ran a lot of projects working in the Brazilian prison system, working youth justice system, and then out of that working with young people in marginalised communities within Rio. Of course, those are just the same sort of things we're interested in here in the UK. What can the arts do? When we have any set of social crises, which could be around knife crime or gun crime, around prisons, around human rights, these are issues we share with other countries. So how do cultural projects and collaborations with countries like Brazil make a difference, especially in light of recent protesting in Rio on civil rights and public services. I think what's been really interesting and challenging for everyone around what's been happening in Brazil is obviously is it started to rethink the social organisation itself. It's challenged the fabric when people go of a city, when people go onto the streets and make their demands in that way rather than through other processes. So saying how a society talks to, its, to itself, how it makes its point known, how it sort of dramatises lives in a different way through street protest and finds a voice in a different way. These protests will mean a lot of different things to different people, but one thing they will, I think, encourage Brazil itself to learn from is that participation in the process of change is really important. And that's interesting because, in many respects, one of the things that uh, the arts organisations this country have looked to Brazil a lot has been about their participatory processes. Really interesting to see the way in which these arts organisations have grown up within communities rather than have something imposed on them from outside because there's often been no state provision in the favela, there's been no cultural precision to the more established cultural and arts institutions. So their own ones have grown up with great strength, vitality and a capacity to understand what's happening and to find solutions. And I think one of the things, just one of the many things you're seeing on the street protests is a way in which people are starting to participate in, want to participate in their society to make decisions about what the World Cup's going to be like and whether money should be spent on the Olympics and how hospitals can be better public services and education and health and transport, how people can participate in a process of change rather than that change happening by the state and institutions that are at times seen not to be adequate to the process, to to real people's lives. What was it like being involved in Rio Occupation London as part of the London 2012 Festival? 30 artists from Rio to spend 30 days making it. At the beginning, we thought they were going to make 30 works. They made 250 new works of art. We performed to nearly 40,000 people. And with a whole range of artists that we're not so used to working with. So it was across all different art forms, visual arts, contemporary performance, young people that we're more used to working with. And I think what what we're looking at in that process Project, breaking down the barriers. The great thing about reoccupation in London was to put those all things together and rethink where, how, and why we make art, we make performance. And that was just the beginning. We really feel that the relationship we have with those artists and with the 15 host London institutions that received them and helped make this project happen all across London, those relationships are very much ongoing. So we're, we're working at the moment about thinking about what it would look, look like 
in a very different sort of way if we're able to take London artists to Rio. What we are doing is facilitating dialogues around some of the things that were learnt in London 2012. So we've been very much part of carrying those dialogues on. So together with the Ministry of Culture and the British Council, we staged something we called the Cultural Olympic Forum in Rio, where we took 12 of the key leading thinkers and makers from the Cultural Olympics here, start new dialogues with about 300 people from different cultural agencies, organisations in Rio and beyond Rio, to think about what Cultural Olympics might look like in 2016. So I think that as an organisation, one of the things we most enjoy doing is helping people talk to each other and to think in different ways. I hope that Rio can do things differently as well as learn from what we're doing. I think it's very much about passing a baton over but it being a very different but looking very different. One of the things that these protests have been saying in, in Rio has been has questioning the whole business of the World Cup and the, the expenditure on the on the Olympics. So it's a very critical time. Perhaps as a result, uh, perhaps we didn't have those conversations in quite such a dynamic way as Rio has been having them. So there's a sort of way in which they're taking on some of the things that we might also want to reflect back on. So as ever, I see these as journeys and I see this as dialogues and I see it as this is axis that, uh, that we work on between the UK and Brazil, between London and Rio.